Right, we're here today with uh, Steph Shaw, who is known to many of you as the Glasgow cabbie. And uh, with all the news about the gender bill being blocked, uh, he's being a... Uh, He's been very vocal about uh, getting support against the bill and also against indoctrination of, of school children. Steph, thank you for coming to the show today. Thank you, Mark. Um, you know, maybe many of our viewers have heard of you, but can you tell us a little bit about how you get started for those who don't? Well, I've been in social media and Facebook for around um, seven and a bit years. And it just basically started through my poetry and promoting Glasgow and Scotland. My poetry became relatively well known in the city and uh, I'd, like Welcome to Glasgow poems and um, Beautiful Scotland poems, which were sold by Glasgow City Council in the People's Palace. And that money went to charity, Good Causes in right. Scotland. And one of my poems uh, titled One More Chance, a true story, a life story, about a man with one leg that I'd met in Glasgow who was down in his luck and um, had lost his leg through to drugs and problems with drinking and prison sentences and had a horrible life through drugs, had contemplated suicide and he'd prayed to God in the very day that he was going to take his own life in the River Clyde. Um, this gentleman um, then uh, prayed to God without being a big believer and called the Samaritans. He told me this story back in April 2017 and it brought me to write a poem titled One More Chance. That poem um, led to a band putting it to music, which was filmed on the River Clyde in Glasgow. James McCauley and the Dirty Bombs uh, were professionally filmed in the Clyde singing this poem, putting it to music. And it then led to and evolved into the Think Again campaign in the River Clyde in Glasgow. All right. I proposed okay. emergency lifeline telephones and clear Samaritan signage for the River Clyde in Glasgow. Um, we campaigned for this for two years, and thankfully, um, eventually, we uh, had these lifeline telephones installed on the River Clyde in a six-month trial. But that was over well over three years ago now, and I'm pleased to say that the phones are still being used today. Well, that's so a great. huge well, thanks to everyone that. who was involved in the Think Again campaign. It would be about a year and a half, possibly closer to two years ago now, where I um, was sent a, a, a link, a video link, to uh, Richard Lucas of the Scottish Family Party um, challenging John Swinney at a parents' meeting in Perth. And I was absolutely shocked to see um, what was shown in that video, which were um, many parents um, shouting down Richard Lucas for challenging John Swinney. And uh, I could barely believe it. But um, I was greatly impressed with and by Richard and uh, extremely disappointed with the parents who were shouting him down as he had been explaining what was going on in sex education within schools in Scotland. Is there a momentum to what you're doing? Yes, without a doubt, Mark. Um, in the last month alone, I got a notification from Facebook today that uh, we've had a further... 1,700 new followers this month. Oh, That's okay. significant. Um, and a lot of people are following me. An awful lot of people are actually leaving um, the SNP, their membership and the, and the SNP group, uh, and coming to follow the Glasgow Cabbie Facebook page. We actually went along to the demonstration that you had in uh, Holyrood uh, just last week uh, against, which seemed to combine a, a, a number of different groups um, that you've you've brought together, uh, people who are against the ch kids' indoctrination, uh, people who are against sex surveys and so on, people who, uh, uh, groups that are various groups as well, against the gender reform bill. Um, how did you think that demonstration went? I thought it was fantastic with a brilliant turnout. Um, we invited all groups along who had any grievance with Nicola Sturgeon um, or the Scottish government, so all were welcome. Uh, hence the reason we had so many placards and flags um, from various groups. And uh, I thought all in all, people were very well behaved and it went extremely well. What do you think about um, the UK government blocking the gender reform bill? Well, I thought it was right and proper. It was the correct thing to do um, for the British government to block this bill. Uh, also, you know, we had felt that it was 
very, or sorry, extremely necessary that this bill should be blocked. This bill was possibly the most dangerous that I've seen since showing an interest in politics um, over the last couple of years. Uh, uh, for women and children, certainly, this bill is dangerous. And how, well, what's the main danger you see in the bill? Well, it's not so much um, the LGBT community. I don't have any problem with people dressing as whatever they want to dress as or identifying um, f and, and anything, anything they want to identify yourself as. Feel free to do that, I say. Let li live and let live. But when it infringes on other people's rights, then we have a problem. And we certainly have a problem with um, convicted criminals um, or those who are masquerading as uh, transgender people. That is a real danger and a threat to women. Um, and also we have a real problem with convicted criminals, um, perhaps in prison, uh, wishing to then um, become transgender and change their name to serve time in a women's prison and perhaps be released from prison to a women's refuge centre where we have some of the most vulnerable people um, in these places. So, yes, uh, we see it as extremely dangerous um, for women and children, mainly girls in this country. Do you think that uh, transgender people are being used as a as a tool, I suppose, by Nicola Sturgeon to cause more division in Scotland? There's no doubt in my mind that uh, Nicola Sturgeon has set out to do that. We've got a, a real problem within the Scottish government that an awful lot of these people who are uh, willing to bring this law in um, don't have children of their own. And of course, we, we also say as well, it's just a big distraction. We actually have real things to deal with. In Scotland, we have cost of living crisis, energy crisis. Um, we have NHS crisis. All of these caused by the uh, uh, SNP's poor administration anyway. So, I mean, to some extent, they're using this uh, bill as a distraction from the actual day-to-day -day issues they should be dealing with. And now they've got the opportunity to use this, uh, the blockage of it by the UK government, again, as another big distraction. I mean, is that, do you feel it's like that a little bit? There's, it, it's that people are they're playing a higher level of politics with this? Um, yes, I would, I would have to agree with you, Mark. They are tiddling about with something they should not be near. Um, and it could well be a cover for many of the other failures of this Scottish government. Because let's make no mistake about it, we've never seen a government in Scotland quite like this. This country is in a dire situation. And um, to make matters worse, we seem to be channeling our energies on um, sex education for children when it shouldn't be an issue. We should be challenging all the other major problems we have in this country. But in the meantime, we must um, battle hard against what the Scottish Government are attempting to do. Um, and we must protect women, children and vulnerable people in Scotland mm -hmm. at all costs. I think it's good that people like yourself are are standing up and getting people behind you to stop um, these. I think, the, for example, that demonstration you had, um, you know, f you know, maybe people hadn't seen that before and even you know, starts to get some publicity. And, you know, even if, say, someone in the UK government sees that, they go, well, actually, there are people out there. It's not just polls that say the Scottish people are against this, but there are people actually out in the streets against this. Yes, Mark, uh, I had um, put this question to Douglas Ross on his Facebook page did he speak to um, Sunak about uh, our demonstration, which I felt was very important. It shows feet in the ground. It shows interest. It shows that people are not standing for it. With a marvellous turnout, uh, I was very, very proud to be there and to be leading that alongside uh, many others. We had just fantastic support um, all, all in all, and um, people made great efforts to be there. I'm extremely disappointed in the Scottish media, but for one or two newspapers, um, really and truly, the Scottish television, STV and BBC, um, really want to look at themselves. 
um, because uh, to my, in my opinion, they are hiding uh, truths from the Scottish public. Well, we've got a continuous complaint, of course, against the Scottish media. They like to focus on, you know, certain issues that and hide other issues that you know don't suit them. Um, uh, discussion about independent an independence referendum that will never come is their favourite topic. You know, now we have STV talking about uh, de facto referendum again, a n- nonsense plan, which they should basically be saying, not giving this plan, the people promoting it, Nicola Sturgeon, uh, anyone, any time of day for this utter nonsense. And and to some extent, we feel the same with these other laws. There's just not enough media scrutiny. If if this um, Nicola Sturgeon was uh, the leader of the Tory party in the UK, then, you know, they'd be all over every single centimetre, millimetre of these um, ridiculous bills, scandals, and um, incompetence all the time, but they get a free pass from the media. And, I mean, there's various reasons for that, but it's it's not very good. So we're going to uh, close up uh, now. Is there anything else you'd like to talk to talk to us about? Uh, just very briefly, you touched on something there. I would personally like to know how much the Scottish government are paying STV, BBC, Sky Television, radio stations and newspapers over uh, a year. Uh, it runs into millions of mm. pounds of our money, the money of the taxpayer, the Scottish public, to hide truths and to control the media in Scotland. Mm-hmm. And it's true. got to be very, very wrong. What is happening in this country is a dictatorship and Nicola Sturgeon is getting away with blue murder. Um, I want to see more people coming out with the type of T-shirt that I see you're wearing just now, Mark. Um we have got to remove Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP from power in Scotland. They are a disgraceful party. Yeah, they are. They are. It's, it's it's shocking, and I think this perhaps this is the beginning of a fight back by the UK government. I mean, the UK government didn't really need to fight back on the uh, referendum bill that went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court did that by itself, um, but this seems to be the first time. Well, I know. I suppose they fought back on this uh, European, uh, what was it, uh, rights of the child thing. So they did fight that, but again in the Supreme Court. So this is the first time they've used a Section Thirty Five to block something. So we'll see whether um, I suppose there are two options um, from here, uh, or a few options. One would be that the SNP government just just says no, that, that was a bad idea. It seems a bit unlikely, um, and drops the bill. Uh, the, the better idea, I think, for everyone concerned, is that it does go back and it gets amended and 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 get, gets better discussion of it. Um, of course, but that may not happen. And then I suppose the third idea is that it will go to Supreme Court and the Supreme Court will strike it down. Then perhaps Nicola Sturgeon will, of course, use that as a grievance. But uh, that will mean that the bill perhaps just will be will be dead. That seems the most likely option. So if you think about it, then, or I'm just thinking about it off the top of my head, um, that means that if she does take it to the Supreme Court rather than amending it, then she's willing to sacrifice the bill as it stands instead of amending it to help transgender people and to help to satisfy women's rights campaigners. Yes, she's willing to take it to the Supreme Court because the money is not coming out of Nicola Sturgeon's salary. (laughs) Um, The money is coming out of the taxpayer's pocket and it'll be another failure for Sturgeon. Um, because there is no way that the Supreme Court will have this. It'll be torn up and shredded, and it'll be yet another failure in the cap of Nicola Sturgeon. This is the this is a, one of the problems we have with nationalism itself. That it basically lets incompetent um, authoritarians into power, and then you don't know what kind of laws you're going to get out of it. And this is a prime example. Yes, they call it independence. I call it separatism. Of course, that's and yes. um, may I add that uh, an awful lot of SNP supporters have come and joined the Glasgow Cabbie Facebook page, and we welcome them with open arms. And long may it continue. So long as people are leaving the SNP, and I can also add that I made a comment on the SNP's Facebook page only days ago that has had over 1,200 positive acknowledgements um, compared to the actual Facebook post itself by the SNP, which is at around 400 and odd acknowledgements with more um, laughing emojis 
than anything else. They are, yes. they are collapsing. Yeah, I think they are collapsing. I mean, it was, it was inevitable they'd start infighting, but it's quite incredible that they would do it on this particular issue. Um, it's really, it's really, you know, quite something to behold. Right. Well, thank you very much for coming to see us today. Um, we will monitor your progress, of course, and you're welcome to come on the show anytime and have a chat about how things progress. All right. It's been great to have you today. Take care. Thank you, Mark. Thank Bye-bye you. Now.